Project Azorian is still surrounded by mystery. Project Azorian is still surrounded by mystery. For years, the CIA would neither confirm nor deny Project Azorian. For years, the CIA would neither confirm nor deny Project Azorian. The CIA plotted to rebuild the claw, but a break in exposed the project. As the Glomer Explorer sailed back to Hawaii, the CIA was already planning a second mission. They would rebuild the claw and recover the rest of the Soviet submarine. But the entire plan was exposed after a break-in no, not Watergate. The target was Howard Hughes. In June of 1974, before the Glomer had even left California, Thieves stole secret documents from the offices of Hughes' Summer Corporation. One of the documents linked Hughes to the CIA and the Glomer Explorer. The thieves contacted the LA police to sell the stolen documents for zero. The CIA, worried that Project Azorian would be exposed, asked the FBI to work with the LA police to recover the document. But by then, the secret was out. A story broke in the LA Times in February of 1975, and the CIA was forced to scrap the project. The audacious plot was a success partially. After three weeks of preparations exactly three miles above the sunken K-129 submarine, the Glomer Explorer was ready to lower the enormous claw and attempt the recovery. The claw itself was 179 feet long by 31 feet wide, and it took eight full days to slowly winch up the treasure from the ocean floor. Everything went smoothly until the submarine was a third of the way up about 9,000 feet below the surface. The claw broke, and a large section of the submarine fell back to the bottom of the sea. The Soviet ship's nuclear-armed ballistic missiles were lost, along with the engine room and any decoding machines or code books. Or, at least, that's the official version according to the CIA. Soviet ships circled the Glomer, nearly activating its self-destruct plan. As soon as the Glomer Explorer arrived in the Pacific, Soviets grew curious about the ship's true purpose. The Soviets sent multiple ships to monitor the Glomer, one of which deployed a helicopter to photograph the U.S. ship. In fact, the CIA mission director was so worried that the Soviets might try to land their helicopter on the Glomer, he ordered the crew to stack crates on the ship's helicopter deck. The Glomer was helpless, the CIA couldn't deploy a host of naval vessels to protect it, because that would only draw more attention. The Glomer had orders to destroy any sensitive material if the Soviets attempted to board. And the final protection was a plan to sink the entire ship if the Soviets tried to seize it, but the men on board were kept in the dark. In 1974, the Glomer Explorer was finally ready to recover the submarine. The ship was too large to hide, but the cover story successfully concealed the true purpose of the Glomer Explorer at first. When the Glomer Explorer launched, it was given a public inauguration and a champagne christening ceremony. Then it set off on the long voyage around the tip of South America since the ship was too big to fit through the Panama Canal. In June of 1974, the Glomer Explorer departed from Long Beach, California, for the voyage to the K-129 recovery site. But the last three miles would be the most difficult, lifting the submarine from the seafloor. The massive Glomer Explorer hit the recovery equipment underwater. The CIA spent four years building an enormous ship to recover the submarine. It was called the Hughes Glomer Explorer, 
and it looked the part of a deep-sea mining ship. The glomer explorer had a massive derrick sitting on top. Beneath the water, the underside of the ship opened to reveal a massive claw-like capture machine to grasp the submarine. The entire sunken vessel would fit into the interior docking well. The elaborate design of the ship made it possible to conduct the entire recovery operation underwater, concealed from ships, aircraft, and spy satellites. The CIA teamed up with Howard Hughes to build a massive ship. The CIA knew they needed a cover story if they were going to deploy an enormous ship in the middle of the Pacific without the Soviets asking questions. And they came up with the perfect idea. They tell the world that Howard Hughes was mining the ocean for manganese nodules. Howard Hughes already had a reputation as an eccentric businessman, and he agreed to help the CIA with Project Azorian. So the CIA spent years producing fake press releases and events, as well as fronting companies promoting Hughes and the exotic ocean mining rush. Project Azorian was almost impossible. From the beginning, the CIA knew the task was daunting. The submarine was three miles below the surface of the ocean, and it weighed 2,000 tons. It was the equivalent of standing on the top of the Empire State Building and trying to pick up a car full of gold from the street below. Except with a lot more water. On top of that, the project had to be absolutely secret at a time when the Soviet Union was monitoring every move by the U.S. government. And it had to occur in the middle of the Pacific Ocean where it would be impossible to disguise the enormous ship necessary to recover the submarine. The submarine sank in a remote part of the Pacific, but it was a rich prize. K-129 rested on the seabed in a nearly deserted part of the Pacific. It was over 1,000 miles from Soviet soil and 1,500 miles northwest of Hawaii. No one knew if it was even possible to pull the submarine up from the seafloor, nothing like it had ever been attempted before. But the allure of Soviet intelligence, including possible cryptographic equipment to decipher Soviet codes, was too rich to leave. The CIA named their top secret plan to recover the Soviet submarine project as Orion and they set to work figuring out the engineering puzzle of recovering K-129. It took six years and half a billion dollars before the project saw a hint of success. It started when, in the middle of the Cold War, a Soviet submarine disappeared. In 1968, in the heat of the Cold War, the Soviet submarine K-129 disappeared in the Pacific Ocean. It was carrying a crew of 98 men, three nuclear missiles, and secret Soviet documents. The Soviets searched for the missing vessel in the vast Pacific, but it seemed lost forever. In August of 1968, while the Republicans were nominating Richard Nixon as their presidential candidate, and the Democratic National Convention in Chicago was falling into chaos, the United States located the missing submarine nearly 17,000 feet below the surface of the Pacific. And the CIA decided to recover it. Hey guys, thank you so much for the support and likes and comments down below and also thank you so much for watching and I look forward to see you in the next video then. Take care. Bye.